Okay, there we go. I believe we are on the correct feed now. Um, so again, I apologize that the wrong video came up for the 13th. Hopefully you guys can switch over and uh, get on this video and I will re-upload the one for the 13th for the Peacock. Okay, nothing like learning a lot in the beginning. Okay, there's all the comments I was looking for in the chat. Okay. All right, so thank you guys again. Always technical issues that we're learning from. So this is Paint with Lovejoy. We are on the correct video. We are doing a vineyard. Um, all right, there we go. Okay, so this is Paint with Lovejoy. Um, we are doing a vineyard today and I am on, on an eight by 10 panel and these are our colors for today. And what we have here is our line drawing already on our canvas. And you've got two options here. You can pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or there's a link in the description box for what I call a traceable. You can purchase that, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer the line um, onto your surface, and then you can jump right into painting. And the traceables are a nice way for my first time painters to kind of get that initial composition on the canvas. Um, and that way you jump right into painting and you don't have to stress about uh, about trying to draw it perfectly. Okay, so let me see. We've got quite a few of you on here. Let's see, we've got Rhonda, Photography Queen, Denise, Chloe. Um, let's see if I'm missing anybody. Um, and Vip Christy, 33, awesome. Chris and Shauna, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, and again, apologize about the technical issues but we're learning. Okay, so for this, we're actually, since it's only a 30 minute demo, we're gonna lay some of our light brown first on our landscape, and then that way we can put the foliage on top of it. Um, we've got two little houses here. We've got some nice rows of hills happening, and then some actual vineyards uh, or uh, uh, vines with the fruit and the grapes on them. And then we get a few lines here, and then little patchwork and different mountains. So like I said, because we need to let stuff dry, we're gonna start with our raw sienna first and kind of put in our base colors, and then we'll go up to the sky and work our way down. So I'm gonna take some of this white and I'm on a small flat brush. We'll be using um, all brushwork today and doing about a one-to-one -one ratio with white and raw sienna, and this is my light brown. All right, and if you have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment. All right. And again, thanks for bearing with me with my technical issues. All right. So as we apply this, like I said, we're just going to place it in a few areas. And at home, I just want you to observe the place of where I put this and the general shape that I make with the placement. And it does not have to be perfect or exact on yours. You're just using this video as a guideline and a reference for what you are creating at home. And if you have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about the exact same shade. Let's see, we're gonna put some here. So we're gonna start in this bottom corner and just kind of curve it into um, where this little road meets. And we're just gonna fill this in. I am using student grade paint, so it is a bit on the transparent side. So you can see some of the black lines underneath. You can see some of the uh, canvas show through. Because my channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters, um, I recommend that you use student grade paint. So that's what I use when I teach these videos. So that way you can um, get an idea of what it looks like. And student grade paint's a nice way to just kind of get comfortable with paint without breaking the bank and buying a bunch of expensive materials. And once you've realized that you do enjoy painting, um, maybe jump up one color at a time to uh, artist grade paint and just get a feel for what it what it feels like to paint with a different type of paint and see what you like and i actually use a combo of both student and artist grade paint because i actually like the transparency of the student grade paint um, in my work that i use painting with a palette knife so basically there's no great right or wrong way or true right or wrong way to paint um, it's more about the process of just painting and it is a very therapeutic process 
And as this world gets more and more stressful, uh, these are good outlets to cultivate into your world. All right, so like I said, we're basically placing this uh, light tan in a few kind of random spots. We've got a few that we're gonna put it in here. And I want this to dry, so that's why we're putting it on first, and then we'll come back and put our foliage on top of it. Now, I tend to stick with the same brush. And as we get into these smaller spaces, if you need to move down to a pointy brush, go right ahead and switch up for what you need. And like I said earlier, same with uh, changing colors or doing stuff different. This is just your time to escape the world for a little bit and have fun and impress yourself with what you create too. That's always beneficial. All right, so we're gonna grab some of the direct raw sienna or yeah, raw sienna um, and slap some of it on here before we move into our next couple of colors. And as this base color is wet, I'm literally just grabbing more of the direct raw sienna and we're just gonna put it on there in a few areas. This will be a little bit darker um, than the first layer that we put on there. And because this is wet, you'll notice that this, the raw sienna and the lighter color that we put on first will blend and mix a little bit. So kind of just have fun with that. Use light pressure and get a good feel for just mixing your paint directly on the canvas. So with this raw sienna, I'm kind of putting it on the bottom of this stripe. It's gonna be on the bottom of kind of this stripe as well. And then for this interior, it was kind of the outside edges of that little path, that little road that was right there. And as you are observing what you are looking at on screen and then applying it to your canvas, you are strengthening your power of observation. And that is a very important factor in the world of art. All right. So cleaning the brush really good. We're pretty much kind of done with some of the browns. We're gonna be putting a lot of rows of green on top of this. I just want this to be dry. So now we're gonna move into the sky and we've got kind of a light blue and then we'll do some blue and purple for our mountains here. Then we'll start moving back into our shades of green and then focusing on our foliage up front. So to make our light blue, clean that brush out really good. We're pulling some white aside. A little bit of pigment goes a long way to make a light blue. So start off with light amount of pigment and work your way darker. You are more than welcome to switch colors. If you want a sunset happening here, you can switch out to those colors. Uh, whatever you feel like. And basically we're gonna be going from the edges of that mountain line to the edges, to the top of the canvas. And if you happen to be painting on a stretched canvas, carry that color over the tops, the sides, and the bottom. That way it looks nice hanging on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And again, if you have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about getting exact perfect shades each time. Variety is the spice of life. All right, so just looking to see if we had any questions. Looks like we're good. I love that you guys chat amongst yourself. Um, very, very cool. And, oh, let's see, we've got a question. I just scoffed up there. Um, certain brand of canvas panels that I use. Um, not really. I actually just buy whatever's cheap. And since I'm buying student uh, materials and I usually buy in bulk, um, I believe these are Soho canvases, canvas panels. And you can get them on jerrysartorama.com. Um, they usually have free shipping over 50 bucks, and that's where I get my canvases. I'll buy brushes in bulk. I actually buy paint from Blix, and I buy those in the half gallon. Uh, but I believe these canvas panels came in a pack of three, and I bought, you know, like 300, I think, because uh, I do put these in the kits that I create. So whatever you find that works for you, stick, you know, go with that. Okay, so let's see. Now we're going to be moving into our mountains. Going to be doing some blue and purple. So I'm actually going to just mix right on top of this light blue I was just using. And we're going to put more blue in there. And we're going to go for closer to kind of like a dark blue. Or darker than what we were using. Not quite as dark as that direct blue. 
All right, and then we're going to place some purple on top of this, and then we'll place a little bit, few other colors. So we'll do a little bit of wet on wet blending. So I'm just going to place this on here. And if you feel like switching out the color of your mountains, if you prefer gray, go right ahead and do that. Or if you want light purple, um, I know if you're looking at mountains on the east coast of the United States, they actually look a little bit more blue. And then a lot of the mountains on the west coast or out on the west, they do have a hint of purple from the sun reflecting. So it just depends on different places. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's go with let's go with the direct blue now, and we're going to fill in this little area. Then we're going to start putting some shading on. So this was kind of a medium blue. Now we're using the direct blue, so it should be a little bit darker. And again, if you need to move into the small pointy brush, go right ahead and switch up for what you need. All right, so I'm actually just gonna clean that off, get it ready for the next time. And we're gonna move down to the pointy brush and we're gonna start putting some shading on here and we'll do a little bit of wet on wet blending. So to make it a little bit more obvious, I'm gonna start with the white and then we'll move in and put some purple and blue. So we'll do this on both mountains. I've got the pointy brush, grabbing that white paint and kind of just right on the top of this mountain in the back, I'm just gonna set that white on there. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit more and on this mountain here, again, just place that white right on top of the blue. Then I actually like to wipe that brush off and you've got two different blending methods you can try. There's one where I just kind of call it the smear method to where you just kind of push that uh, top color, that white into the blue or a method that a lot of people have been enjoying. We're calling this the stabbing method, almost kind of pointillism. This will ruin your brushes a little bit quicker, but it is very stress relieving and a lot of fun. Um, but try either one. And we're just basically just changing the shade of that base color. So when we add this white on top of it, it blends in with the base color of the blue and changes shades. So if you end up doing this area like I did here and you move your brush too much and you lose that, I'm actually just gonna reapply that white and still do the blending method, but move my brush a little bit less so that way I have a bit more of a highlight on there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna go in with some purple and we'll start on this mountain. And same thing, we're gonna blend that purple into the blue and again, it's gonna change colors and be kind of a, a cooler purple, a little bit deeper, um, but this is what we call wet on wet blending. And it is a lot of fun. I'm gonna grab some of that purple for the mountain back here. And if you need to, if your paint is drying kind of on the swift side, you can go back to that middle blue if you need to, grab some of that blue and you can blend it in as well. So blending is a lot of kind of back and forth um, and you just kind of adjust based on the variables of what you're doing for that day, how fast or slow your paint is drying, um, and even just kind of how you're feeling for that day. All of that goes into your artwork. Alright, so good on questions. Okay, just take a look. All right, and right here we do have another little small sliver of a mountain. And that one, just because I like a different color, I'm going to use that direct purple for this one. And again, it's kind of on that transparent side, so I'm applying it a little bit thicker. So if you're using student grade paint at home, you can apply your paint a little bit thicker or you can do two or three coats of the color to get a bit more opaque coverage. Like I said, each brand of paint um, and the variables from when you're painting uh, just kind of affect what you're doing. So now I wiped that brush off. I'm gonna grab some of that blue. And again, at the bottom of that little mountain section, just applying this right on top of the purple. And it's gonna be a slightly different shade than what we used um, on the other two mountains where we had the blue base and then put purple on top of it here. We're doing something a little, we're doing the opposite actually. 
And just again, just notice how the color looks a little bit different based on um, the process of applying it and which colors you mixed together. All right, so we're gonna clean that brush really good. I'm gonna just clean it and get it ready. I'm gonna go back up to that middle flat brush. Clean that really good, getting all that blue out. And now we're actually gonna move into our green and our yellow. We're gonna make kind of a spring green, kind of get some of our base colors on here. Let's see. And then we'll get our little house on there and then come back for our foliage. So gonna do equal parts, yellow and green. But if you feel like it's a different shade that you want, go right ahead and adjust. You can put more yellow or more green in yours. I'm just kind of going for that middle spring green. And let's actually go ahead and get it down here first. And my brown is still a little bit wet. So if you do get a little bit of that brown in there, it mixes with it. Just kind of work it into um, your painting and you might it might change the color just a little bit. It'll make it a little bit more earthy with that brown mixing with the green. But just kind of play with that. Soften that edge right where that green and that brown meet if your paint is still wet. If not, like I said, we're just getting our base colors on here and then we'll make sure that foliage is on. It's pretty thick in the front. Now, as you paint today or any time that you paint, please send me photos of what you paint. Email them to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I do like posting your guys' pictures on my social media, and it encourages other people to give painting a try. Um, so your photos and your encouragement to other people are very, very important in getting more and more people to paint. And I want more people to paint for the simple fact that it is stress relieving and I want more stress free people in the world. So if what you're finding works for you, share it with your friends and get them stress free as well. Basically, it's just a nice escape from the world to have a creative outlet. So if painting isn't your flavor or your favorite thing, please try other creative outlets and just find something that works for you. Um, for your stress relieving elements. So now I'm gonna switch down to the pointy brush, grabbing that same color. We're gonna do a few shades of green on top of this, but we have um, kind of a cool collection of almost little squares back here in different shades. So sticking with that same shade first, let's go over here. And these are kind of, um, I guess they'd be more like trapezoids, squished little rectangles or a little askew squares. And let's see, now I'm gonna add more yellow. Let's go a little bit lighter. I want a few different shades of these um, weird skewed squares happening. So adding a little bit more yellow. Didn't really clean the brush um, to add the more yellow because I am hanging out in that same color family of the greens. Let's get a little bit back here. And then now I'm actually going to go with that direct green, a little bit darker. And we're going to fill in this area. Let's use this green over here as well. We are almost to the point, which is my favorite part where I feel like a painting has begun when we get to the underpainting, which means there's no canvas space showing. All right, um, let's see these little hills here. Let's actually do a little bit of green and blue. It's about a one to one ratio. Oh, 
let's go back to that yellow green. So when you're going from a dark color to a light, clean your brush so that way you don't take in some of that dark color um, into the light and contaminate your color. All right, and for this last little section, let's see if I can grab some of that pure yellow. Go a little bit lighter right here, and then I think we're going to do the dark blue-green for that last little area. Actually, let's do green and purple just so you can see the difference. They'll both be pretty, they'll both be kind of dark. So do equal parts, green and purple this time. And again, your brain's just taking on different knowledge of what these colors look like when they mix. And this is a bit more of a muted, kind of muddier color. And if you're finding that your brush strokes show up a lot, you're not liking it, um, kind of hold your brush at like a 45 degree angle and use the side of the bristles and light pressure to apply your paint. And that light pressure will keep um, the thickness of the paint a little bit smoother since you're not using the bristles on your brush to touch the actual canvas. That's why we come in at that 45 degree angle. All right. Okay, oh, let's get those little houses on there. So let's see, we've got a little touch of gray. So we're going for a light gray. I'm still with the pointy brush. A uh, little bit of black goes a long way to make a light gray. And I'm putting these on the right-hand side of the building, the gray. And then I'm going to clean, wipe that brush off. We're going to use pure white for the other side of the building. And then these will actually have the raw sienna uh, roof. And super exciting to put white on a white canvas, but it just helps to have something on there so that way the texture is the same across the whole painting. And then we're going to use that direct raw sienna for the roof. And as you're doing this, these are kind of smaller lines, so kind of treat your brush like a pencil and just use the tip of it. And if you're finding that you are shaking as you touch the canvas, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. Gets easier with more practice. All right, so we are at our underpainting. And let's see, any questions? Nope, you guys are liking it. Awesome, appreciate it. And okay, so now we're gonna be starting, we're gonna start putting these rows in here. And I'll probably stick with this uh, nice pointy brush since these are gonna be kind of skinny. And they're gonna start here at the top of the hill and then they curve just a little bit. And we're gonna try to keep that same line as we go across the whole thing. And Let's see, let's go back to that medium green. So that was the equal parts, yellow and green. If you want to go a little bit more on the yellow side, go right ahead. All right, and as we get into these, because we're gonna be using the smaller pointy brush, if you're noticing that your brush strokes get whiter and whiter and whiter, Take a look and see how much buildup you have on your paint do you, or on your brush. Do you have a lot of paint where the metal and the bristles meet? And if you do, it's okay to kind of wipe off that excess paint and then it'll bring your bristles back together. So I'm gonna grab that light green and I'm gonna start here kind of in the middle close to the house so it's a little bit more obvious. And kind of keep light pressure and if you need to, rest your forearm against the edge of the table or put your pinky out and on a dry spot on the table, use that as your kind of steady pivot point, whichever you feel you need to do. And I am applying this paint on there kind of thick because I want it to uh, be opaque and I want it to lay on top of the brown. The brown is basically the pathways in between each of these rows. Um, kind of like this would be the pathway. So that's how we're getting kind of that cool perspective, that depth. All right, 
and just kind of talking a little bit about the YouTube channel. Um, I do, my channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters. And I do recommend that you paint quite a few paintings um, on my channel, get comfortable with the process. And then when you're ready to push your skills, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out the paint your pet class. Um, you'll go a little bit more in depth with what you're learning and also check out the intro to in, uh, knife scraping, another very therapeutic process. And then when you've kind of taken all the classes um, that I'm offering currently, you know, keep checking back because I will be adding more, but I recommend that you take classes from a variety of instructors and take the parts that work from each instructor, move on and keep developing your style. Um, one teacher does not have all the answers and a couple of teachers might explain the exact same thing but by you hearing it from a few different perspectives you're going to learn you're, it's going to sink in a little bit more um, and be more impactful for you so please there's tons and tons and tons of teachers out there and awesome youtubers that are doing other videos too so keep pushing your skills and learn from a variety of people. And again, um, after you're probably halfway through on these rows, just check your brush, see if you've got a lot of buildup, if you need to get some of that paint off of there. And as we get into kind of beyond the underpainting, get in the habit of getting out of your chair and looking at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. And as you're creating and learning to look at your artwork from the perspective that most of the audience members will be looking at it, um, that's a good habit to kind of get into. As it kind of moves up the hill, it does curve a little bit. They look like interesting zebra stripes, kind of like it. All right, and then with that same brush, I'm gonna clean it out really good. We're gonna go for a little bit more green and we're gonna put some here in the middle. This is actually the pathway where the car would drive down and these are the grooves for the tires. All right, I'm taking some more of that darker green and we're placing it here and I am overlapping a little bit of that pathway of that brown. We're imagining that this is the grass that the vines will be growing out of. Their uh, trunks will be here. And then on this back side, on this stripe on the left hand side, I'm adding the darker green. And then same thing, going back to these little rows and on the right hand side, I'm not going, doing it on every single row, but on the right hand side of these light green little rows, I'm adding just a little hint of the darker green. And again, this just gets us kind of a third value in here, a third shadow. And this helps create that magical illusion of this depth on a flat 2D surface. And I think we've been doing the daily demos for about two and a half months now. I will continue this for the rest of this month, likely into next month. And then I think in August for the fall, I'll start shooting down to maybe three or five days a week. Um, but this has been such a great outlet, minus all the technical issues, even though I learned from each one of those. Um, but you guys have been an awesome support. It's gotten a great inventory of painting selections for first time painters um, that I wouldn't have probably done on my own. And you guys have actually gotten me to paint, um, so still using the green, paint stuff that I wouldn't normally paint. So like I said, it's just been great challenges. Some have been successful, some have not. And out of, 
what are, I think I'm at like 76 paintings or something. Out of 76 paintings, there's probably two that I would like to take off of the demo list and never show anybody again. And that's part of the creative process, especially if you're going to be painting quite often, um, like painting every day. You're not going to be perfect every single day. You know, that's just part of life. So if you paint close to 80 paintings and four of them you want to throw away, that's a pretty good average. And out of 80 paintings, if maybe three or four are just amazingly awesome and the best, that's also part of the process. Um, but you learn from each painting that you create and you take those skills that you learn into the next painting. So that's why it's more important about the process of painting rather than creating a masterpiece each time. All right, so basically just taking this darker green and placing it just in a few areas as we have these little, um, uh, I guess, kind of grid lines, sections of agriculture here in the distance. And now we're actually going to go to a little bit lighter green. So going back to mixing with that yellow and more on the yellow side. And let's get some foliage here. And here we'll be doing that kind of tapping method or stabbing method, whichever sounds more therapeutic to say. And we've got like a little forest happening on this part of the hill. I am overlapping the mountain a little bit, not quite overlapping to where those rows are. And then now let's grab some of that direct green, same thing, just kind of stab it in there, play with it. This is also a, a fun portion to finger paint but just kind of give it a little collection of uh, foliage happening there. All right, so we're gonna let that dry a little bit because we do have a few more trees that are gonna be hanging out here. Um, I'm pretty happy with the mountain. Now we have this kind of intense, um, these are the two rows of, um, of wine, the vines, the grape vines. You know, and again, like I said, this is where the car would drive to go down the path. So I'm going to move back up to that middle flat brush and we're going to kind of go with that stabbing method. And we're actually going to start with the yellow so that way I have a bit of a more bold approach and then we'll use green and then there is a touch of brown in those. Um, I believe this is a bit more of a fall uh, vineyard scene. All right, so grabbing that direct yellow and you'll notice that every couple of brush strokes I'm going to go in and grab more paint. And we're going to kind of just literally plop, plop, like this. Take out any stress and frustration. Go back and grab more paint. And here I am overlapping a little bit over this hill because, again, we're making sure that this pops forward. And based on the paint that you're using, you may have to apply it a little thicker for more opaque coverage or not. And I'm going right over this post. We may end up covering it entirely. And I'm putting the yellow on first so we have a bit more of a contrast and then we're going to put some darker colors on top of it. And then doing the same thing here. And again, this is pretty wide. This is the foreground, so there's more contrast in the foreground compared to the background. And again, we are slightly overlapping a little bit of that hill on the rows. Again, just to give the indication that we've got um, all this foliage so close on our scene. And I gotta throw some more yellow paint on my canvas. All right, let's see. Nice. Cool. And we got a suggestion. Thanks for the suggestion, Mike. We'll do a Dr. Scene uh, landscape or scene next. I'll add that to the list. Um, and perfect since I live in San Diego, since uh, a lot of the Dr. Seuss stuff was inspired in the La Jolla area. Um, thanks, Rhonda. Yeah, it amazes me sometimes what I can create in an hour or in a half hour. All right, and let's see, we've got another question here. Pointy brush number one or number two? Okay, so when you're looking at your brushes, I'm gonna make sure I ex get it right, because um, I always do it backwards. 
So maybe double check when you are looking at your brushes. And I'm just looking really quick. Oh, most of my numbers are already kind of all washed off. So I believe the smaller, yeah, I believe the smaller number of the brush is a smaller brush. And so a number one pointy is gonna be a really tiny pointy brush to where a number 16 pointy is gonna be a lot wider. Um, so if you're working on small canvases, eight by 10, 11 by 14, nine by 12, even 16 by 20s, you'll probably be hanging out with um, a number one, number two, up to probably a number four pointy brush. If you start painting larger, um, then you might start getting the bigger uh, brushes, pointy brushes that are a 16, a 14, a 24. Those are also more expensive brushes too as they get bigger. Uh, so I generally recommend a flat brush like this, and I usually do two. I usually do one this size, and I think I'm close enough. I can grab this one. There we go. So I usually do one this size, and especially if I'm on a 16 by 20, I use this one quite a bit. And then this one is a, this one's actually an eight. And this one, now they're going down to three quarters. So some brands do change them differently, but I'm pretty sure the smaller the number, the smaller the brush. And if I am incorrect, please leave a comment so that way it can be corrected for you guys at home. Um, so yeah, I usually like two of these and then a pointy brush. And I tend to do a lot of stuff with just a small number of brushes. Um, and the reason I paint with the palette knife was because I hated cleaning brushes and I hated mixing paint. So that's what I actually do now is mix paint and clean brushes. All right, so just adding more of this yellow can have a few spots to where it kind of shines through with some of that tan underneath. Now let's go right in with the green, same thing. So leave it kind of chunky because I want a little bit more of the yellow to kind of pop. And by having a bit of a contrast, a bit more of the bold green next to the yellow, that brings this part forward to where when you normally paint landscapes, um, it's almost as if these two mountains might blend together and then some some landscapes It's almost as if that uh, horizon lines blends in with the skyline All right, and let's see let's There's a few spots of the raw sienna in there and I'm actually tempted to throw on some orange for some fall colors Let's actually get those poles in there first. So I'm actually gonna use the black. And let's see, they kind of start here. So they're just gonna kind of go straight up. They're pretty uh, perpendicular, pretty parallel to the edges of the canvas. And they're gonna stop once we get into here. So these are just the bottoms of each of our vines. And they don't have to be perfectly straight. So I'm kind of starting them in that green area. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And we're going to put some foliage over that area. All right, I'm going to throw a touch of red on here real quick so we can make a little bit of orange. So we're going to go back to this area, do the slapping of the paint. And like I said, that red is way too bold. And a little bit of red goes a long way to make your oranges. If you have actual orange, you can use that. There we go. So just getting a little hint that we do have some fall colors happening. If you do not want fall colors in here, you do not have to add it. Just kind of breaking up the space and if you're noticing that you're picking up a lot of the yellow and the green wipe that brush off again grab some more of that color and go back and reapply and again this one's going to be a bit more sparing just to kind of help break up that color and then i'll show you how we'll put a few little grapes in there if you want and they're literally just gonna be little dots, little circles next to each other to give the illusion that we've got grapes. And you can either use pointy brush 
or you can actually use the back end of the brush. And if you want to use the back end of the brush, I literally just take it and we're do a collection of your little dot grapes. If you want them a little more defined, let your paint dry and then apply your dots. They'll stay in a bit more of a circle shape compared to it kind of mixing with um, the yellows and the greens under there. So in a lot of the work that I do, I work in layers um, and especially with the palette knife work that I do, it, letting the layers dry in between and then placing colors on top of it is just something that I've kind of dove into pretty much my whole career. And I just, I liked the fact of how the layers played with each other. So I teach in that style a lot. So if you can get comfortable with um, getting colors and layers to interact with each other and getting comfortable with putting paint on top of it, uh, it just opens up a whole different world of possibilities with you know, layering your paint compared to uh, what we call direct painting to where you're looking at something and you do the exact value um, everything in that section and then move on to another section and i'm sure many of you have seen those on instagram and facebook and stuff to where you maybe it's a picture of a horse and they're working on the eye first and it's so photorealistic in the eye and then the rest of the canvas is uh, uh, white as they're still going uh, with the creation process so there are many many different styles of painting and try a bunch of them and if you want to do more photorealistic painting that comes with a lot of practice and you will get into the grid method of painting and drawing and when you see a lot of that photorealism that's the method that the majority of the method that they are using is um, the grid method all right and for your vineyard if you prefer different colored grapes if you want more of a reddish purple or you need some Pinot Grigio and you want your green grapes, um, feel free to switch it up. If you do go for the green grapes, I would recommend using different foliage colors, maybe more the fall colors, so that way the green grapes stand out on top of that. And I've got a few other places that I'm going to put some foliage up in the top, but this is just about the conclusion of today's painting. And even with the technical issues, I still kept it at under 45 minutes. Um, and again, thank you guys for bearing with me with all the technical issues over the last three months. Um, I do learn from each one and adjust to try to not make it happen again, but I do find them very irritating. But that's part of life. It's part of art. You just got to learn to adapt and adjust. All right, so we're going to put a few little spots of green here just on the base as if we have a little bit of grass hanging out underneath each of our stems, little trunks. All right, and let's see, I wanna go a little bit, actually, I don't think we need to go too much darker. We've got a few collection of trees hanging out here. And a few more just there on the edge. And let's see, this is pretty dark on this side, so I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow, lighten it up. Again, our interesting foliage on the side of this hill. And before we are done, let's jump into some white. Let's get a highlight on the right hand side of the pole. And this black is still actually wet, so it's turning to a little bit of gray, but on each, not the poles, but each of the stems on that right hand side, I'm just doing a little hint of the white. And again, it just gives us an illusion that we've got the light source coming from a specific area. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white and a touch of raw sienna going a little bit lighter, mainly hanging out in the white and this path right here. I just want to have a few more light spaces. Again, since this is the closest forward, um, we usually have a bit more contrast that happens. And let's see, let's go in with that green and purple. So I still have a little bit of this hanging out here. 
We're going to go in again on that right hand side on the grass, just adding one more shade and value in there. So I think this brings us to the conclusion of today's vineyard painting. It was a lot fun, a lot of fun. Um, actually more fun than yesterday's demo. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free, leave comments for what you want me to paint in the future. And I believe I have the next 20 paintings on the YouTube page, as well as the traceables up on my website. So check that out. And I'm keeping a new list um, for the next round. So keep your suggestions coming. Um, yeah, send me photos of what you paint. Please share your paintings with your community and get more people to paint off of my website. Um, it just keeps it spreading and keeps me happy and keeps you happy, hopefully as well. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Happy painting. Cheers.